Howdy folks, it's Nito with AP 2020 Outdoors. This is the, is the Federal 9mm HST really that good? Part 2. This time I'm putting it up against the Underwood 90 grain Extreme Defender. These use a Lehigh Defense 90 grain Extreme Defense bullets. Do some chronograph testing. This is my modified Glock 26 with the 4.6 inch aftermarket barrel. Stay tuned. All right, folks, first up to bat, the Underwood ammo. These are the 90 grain Lehigh Defense Extreme Defense bullets. These are actually called the Underwood Extreme Defenders. And my Glock 26 with the 4.6 inch aftermarket barrel. Here we go. All right, we'll look at the velocity recordings. All right, so I'm actually showing a true muzzle velocity of 1,411 feet per second. Show a high of 1423, a low of 1392. All right, stay tuned for the Federal HST. All right, folks, up next to bat is a Federal 124 grain, 9 millimeter HST. All right, let's look at those velocities. All right, so I'm showing a true muzzle velocity of 1,199, so roughly 1,200 feet per second. All right, so here's the setup. I have a deer shoulder, 10% ballistic gelatin. Just formulated this a couple days ago, and I've got the prize at the end of the table there. All right, folks, first up to bat is the Underwood Ammo. This is the Extreme Defender, the Lehigh Defense 90 grain Extreme Defense bullet, 1,411 feet per second. Let's see how that went. All right, folks, looks like we had a uh, full penetration, 16 inches, <laughs> made the heart shot. Permanent wound cavity, typical of the extreme defense bullets, about an inch and a half to two inches in diameter, starting almost immediately, stretching for about probably eight inches, half the block. See what kind of damage we did on the shoulder. Through and through. All right, folks, up next is the Federal 124 grain HST chronographed at 1199, 1200 feet per second. That's pretty interesting. All right, folks, I tell you what, that's not what I expected. Get the shoulder out of the way here. 
if you look I've got two parts of the Federal HST one part broke up probably at about the two and a half inch mark oh yeah that's the base of the bullet okay let me see if I can extract that there's the base look like a piece of lead right here and then we got another piece of lead here yep couple fragments right there so let's go ahead and zoom in on the remnants of the federal HST alright folks so if you look the uh, lead core separated from the jacket I got the maximum actually on the uh, brass jacket maybe got at the most maybe six inches of penetration uh, the lead lead main shank was maybe four inches all right folks well I think that's pretty conclusive you know that's pretty disconcerting actually you know this uh this video is now going to quickly turn into a public service announcement you know, I know a lot of you guys that are swear by the federal HST 9mm loadings. And you know what, the the, uh, the test I was trying to simulate, uh, the, reason, the reason why the FBI spec out a minimum 12 inches to uh, 18 inches of penetration is on a broadside shot on a bad guy on a human. I mean, you think about a broadside shot trying to penetrate the uh, arm, the bicep, the uh, large arm bone into the chest cavity and then traversing toward, toward the heart and that's what I did on the uh, gel block I just uh, suspended a juicy uh, at the uh, probably roughly the 15 inch mark and as we had seen from the uh, Underwood ammo the 90 grain extreme defender we achieved penetration through and through pierced the quote heart actually when I reviewed the high speed video and I'll highlight that uh, the bullet did exit, but it just bounced off the rubber. Uh, honestly, I don't think it would have really over-penetrated if I had another second gel block in there. The really disconcerting uh, thing that concerns me, uh, circling back to the federal 124 green HST, is that how poorly it performed. I mean, that was a, a deer shoulder bone, you know, roughly approximating, you know, a, a, a grown man's. Uh, bicep and bone structure and the bullet completely failed I mean it, it achieved maybe four inches of penetration where it had a pretty decent uh, temporary stretch cavity and then the, the the lead core separated from the jacket uh, you know probably at about the six inch mark clearly would have not penetrated into the vitals so you know you all make your own conclusions I'm just showing you the test results I've found. You know, if you, if you guys swear by the federal HST, by all means carry it. I guess I guess if you're going to get in the shoot with a bad guy, make sure he's facing straight on to you because this test proves that on a broadside shot, you're not going to reach his vitals. You know, that and and that's pretty disconcerting. I'm sorry. You know, I just I really am shocked. I did, I did not, I, you know, I expected the HST to penetrate at least 10 or 12 inches to about this point. I really did not expect the HST to fail like that. So really, the title of this video was, is the federal 9mm HST really that good? I tell you, I'm being perfectly honest with you all, it's not. So anyways, it's Nita with AP2020 Outdoors. Remember, support our Second Amendment rights. Stay tuned. I've got another video planned with the uh, Underwood Ammo 380, the 65 drain Extreme Defender, and my Glock 42. We'll see you all later.